Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Jeremy Smith. So, a couple of days ago, on my video um, about my love and hate of Nikon, um, someone that calls themselves Rationalithic asked me a question about the post processing of one of my photographs that I showed in the video. Um, he asked me, or she asked me, I'd like to see a tutorial on how to turn the out-of-camera photo into an edited photo using Lightroom or whatever you use. I'd like to see that process because the edited photo is a lot more vivid and stands out much more. Okay, so anyways, Rationalific, I have decided to do just that. Um, this is the photograph and I, I always start all of my editing in Lightroom first and then go from there. So we go ahead and get this full screen. Okay, so the version we're looking at right now is the unedited version of the photograph. Um, before that, right here, this is the version that's edited just with the Lightroom edit. And then after that, we have a version that shows the Lightroom and Photoshop edit. So that's how that all comes together. The first thing that I do whenever I start to work with a picture like this is I go in and I turn on my profile corrections and this is especially this is something especially good to do in this case because I did use the Nikon 14 and 24 which does have some distortion so anyways I like to turn that on first um, as I mentioned in my video one of the things I do like about the Nikon files is that I can really really get a lot of dynamic range out of things so the first thing here is that uh, I want it to be able to get a lot more detail in the sky now you can use these individual sliders for your highlights, your shadows, your whites and blacks and you can use these all individually um, the whites are going to be the extreme extreme areas at the very very end of the histogram, the very, very bright parts the blacks are going to be the very, very dark parts and then we have our highlights and then we have our shadows, and of course our mid-tone adjustment is affected by the exposure slider. Now you can do this two ways. You can actually come down here and directly affect these sliders. Double clicking on the uh, title beside them actually sets them to zero again. But instead of working with these sliders directly, I actually like to click on the histogram itself because I'm kind of visual that way. You can see not a whole lot happens there. Um, I'm going to bring down the overall exposure. And once I do that, I can actually come in and then bring the shadow level up. And we get a result like that. It starts to look uh, starts to look pretty flat at first. So we can after we do that, we can actually come back and then increase our contrast a little bit like this. Okay, and that's how that works. Uh, the other thing that I like to do in this, in a photograph like this, is increase the uh, clarity. And clarity is basically mid-tone contrast, so it, it kind of increases your perceived sharpness. So I like to bring that up a little bit like this. Vibrance is something to use. Uh, it's going to increase the overall saturation, but unlike the saturation slider, it actually doesn't uh, affect skin tones as much. So that's the nice thing about it for portraits. So we can bring that up just a bit, like that. And then down here, <coughs> we have our hue, saturation, and color. Right now I'm working under the saturation tab. And there's something that Adobe calls a target tool, which is this thing right here. So we don't have to, like, you know, go old school and, like, start affecting all the sliders to see what's registering. Instead, we can just click on the target tool, drag it over to the photograph, and then you'll notice that you can actually uh, see that the program is picking out which corresponding slider belongs with that particular part of the photograph. So here we're wanting to bring out a lot of blues, so I'm going to just come up into this area and just bring that up a little bit too, just like that. We might want to work with luminance, <clears throat> and luminance is basically going to be the uh, brightness of a particular uh, color. So we might actually want to do that. I'm not even sure if I did that in the original edit, but it, <laughs> it wouldn't have been a bad idea. So we can do something along those lines like that. 
you do have to be careful um, because a lot of these colors are grouped together so you can see how this I'm affecting yellow in the sky but I'm also affecting some of the yellow in the skin tone too so you do have to be careful and mindful to take note of what's actually being affected as you make these adjustments Lightroom does have an option to where you can use uh, some some local adjustments I'm going to take advantage of that right here um, along his uh, brow here now I've totally got the wrong slider selected right now but we can fix that we can just go over there and instead I'm going to affect the brightness just in the shadow region just like that so that way we can make his eyes not so dark this way so something like that and let's see let's see how this compares to my original edit pretty similar but yeah we definitely have a ways to go notice how far I brought the highlights down in the original one So yeah guys, I was really, really pushing uh, what <laughs> can be done with the file. We also can use our tone curve down here to also fine tune our level of contrast. Now, <clears throat> I definitely am more of a fan of uh, cooler colors in my photographs. So I'm going to play with the white balance just a little bit here. Let's see. Now as far as the differences in skin tone, you can definitely see some differences there. We can actually come back down to this uh, hue saturation and luminance <coughs> grouping here. And let's see here, let's go, we can go into hue, and I'm seeing a lot of yellow in his skin tone right now, so I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of shift that over like this, just slightly. And then, I'm going to increase the luminance a bit. And that's kind of how I got that uh, glowing sort of look that we have in the original photograph. And then also in the original photo, I had a bit of vignette as well. So we can come down the list, and we we'll go down to our effects, and we can do that. That's also uh, helping us to further darken the sky, and of course it helps uh, draw the viewer's eyes more towards the center of the photograph. So I had a very similar thing going on in the other photo, although I think I still had a touch more blue in my original edit. Anyways, but that's how that works. <clears throat> so now as you can see, we pretty much have that look pretty, pretty straightforward here. Now whenever we compare this to our version that we did in Lightroom and Photoshop, we of course noticed that we don't have those ugly lamp posts in the background. To get rid of those, uh, we can go over to Photoshop now. So I'll take this file that I've worked on, right click on it, go to Edit In, and then Photoshop CC 2015. And for all this sort of editing, I use a uh, Wacom tablet, the Intuos Pro small size. Once we're here in Photoshop, um, I'm going to just make a duplicate layer by hitting Control J or Command J on a Mac. And we'll go full screen here too. I did some other minor uh, tidying up with the skin. I'm not going to do the entire thing, but I'll give you an idea of what I normally do. Now, since this is a guy we're working on, I'm not going to do a whole lot of skin smoothing, <clears throat> but if there's any larger blemishes, 
I'll use something like the patch tool. Uh, <laughs> not on content aware though. Let's see if we can step back. But anyways, I'll use the patch tool in this fashion like this to get rid of any any blemishes uh, that I don't think look good. But as I said, you know, this is the guy, so I'm not going to be doing any like advanced painting techniques or anything. Okay. We'll go ahead and get another layer going here. And basically, um, I'm a big, big fan of the patch tool, so I like to go in here like this, and this is how I actually go in and remove this. Now, a lot of times if the patch tool is not doing what I want it to do, I will use the clone stamp still. And so I would go at it about something about like this. Now, I'm not going to do the entire thing, guys. I'm not going to do the entire thing here. But you get the idea. This is basically how I would do that. And yeah, the patch tool works out very well for this sort of thing. Um, definitely one of my favorite tools to use in Photoshop, but as you can see, it does not take very long to get rid of something like that. One other thing that I'll sometimes do here is I will create another layer and I will then use the camera raw filter and that way I can actually further um, enhance certain areas of the photograph but a little trick on that, what I'll do is like I'll come in here and I'll make some adjustments like this. Um, let's just say that I want to bring a little bit more detail to the shadow areas, but I didn't want to do it to the entire photo. Obviously, this is the same adjustment I had in Lightroom, um, but maybe I don't want this on the entire photo. Maybe I just want it on a specific part of the photo. So I can go in here and I can increase this saturation, sorry, this shadow detail like this. Hit OK. But now since this is on another layer, I can add a layer mask. And once that layer mask is applied, then I can go in here and I'm going to go over here, make sure I click on my mask, go to edit, and then fill. Fill to black, and that's going to hide everything. And then I can turn around and paint with white. And that will actually allow me to come in and have this particular adjustment affected only the area that I want it to affect and not the entire photograph. And the backslash key in Photoshop allows you to see your layer mask. So sometimes I'll go into this view so I can actually see you know exactly what I am painting because otherwise with these subtle adjustments it can be very very tricky to see what you have going on and so now if I come over here and toggle this layer on and off you can see that now we have limited that particular adjustment just to his face and not to the entire photograph so we have a lot more flexibility here in Photoshop than we did in Lightroom. And I could do that same sort of thing to all sorts of things. I could, you know, I could finish with this and I could actually um, repeat this process. If I wanted to repeat this process again, and by the way, Control Shift A is the shortcut to bring up the camera raw filter. I could come in here and I could go down and I could do the same thing to my highlights. Although in this particular case, it looks like I'll be able to get away without using the mask. And then I can look at the layer like this. 
And then sometimes I will play with the opacity too if I want to really, really fine tune things. Anyways, once I'm happy with it, flatten her down. Control S to save. And of course, if I go back to Lightroom, we now see that we have two files. This was our virtual copy that I created, so I could begin working on this like it was a new file. And then right here, this is the Photoshop file that we have. So you can see that we have it right beside the one that I originally did. And so there you have it. They actually have a pretty uh, pretty good, a pretty similar look to them. I actually kind of like what I did to his skin tone a little bit better this time around than in the original I did over here. And guys, that is basically, uh, that's basically how I do my processing. Um, at least for this particular type of situation. So, yes. Oh my goodness, guy, you have a really, really strange screen name. I have to go back to remember it. Yes, Rationalific. That's it. <laughs> that is how the edit for that photograph is done. Um, if anyone else has any questions, just feel free to write me in the comments below. And guys, definitely do not forget to subscribe um, if you guys haven't had the opportunity yet. You can take a look at my website. Uh, someone was asking me about Instagram the other day. So on my site here, I actually have some links to things like Instagram right there. Um, I do like to post photographs of the cameras that I'm currently reviewing on here oftentimes so that will really give you an idea of what's coming up a lot of times until next time guys don't forget to like share and subscribe <laughs> this is Jeremy Smith signing off